So hello and welcome to this quick tour of our inventory planning application. Um, we do have a more a more detailed uh, in-depth demo that's available. But what I'm going to do right now is, is kind of use the next five minutes just to give you a very, a very quick overview of the of the app. So what we're looking at here is, is uh, the first step in the workflow. So the workflow guided down the side here. And this is the network that we're going to uh, use for our inventory model. I can define this network in, in several ways. So I can define it explicitly in my input data. I can allow the application to simply um, to simply allocate my uh, demand points to the to the nearest uh, distribution point, or as I've done in this particular setup, I can bring in a um, uh, an output data file from Network Design. So a network I've created in our Network Design app. Um, exported as a scenario, I can bring straight into inventory to do the inventory calculations on. And, and in terms of the calculations in, in this KPI table here, we see the, the summary result um, that, of, of where we're at right now. So exploded by safety stock, cycle stock in transit. Uh, if I have any MRO spare part stock, um, I can see what that is as well. Uh, an assessment of my inventory holding cost, and, and if I have chosen to, what my actual stock position is at each location right now. So that's kind of the, gives me an overview. Um, let's look at creating a scenario now. Um, so one of, the, one of the big levers we've got that impacts how much inventory we need um, out, outside of our network configuration is service level. So what I'm able to do on this page, um, so the, the top tables are relating to uh, my regular products. I can I can set the service level um, either either individually. So so I can go in here for any product and customer and and, and simply uh, change that, or I can change it by uh, by segment. So let's say we wanted our our uh, B class X item, so our medium mover low variability items, I can, I can change the service level there and that will automatically get, get applied. Similarly, for, for spare parts, um, I, can, I can edit individual records or I can use this option to, uh, to do a mass change on whatever I've got uh, filtered, uh, filtered currently. And then I, I can make some choices around what am I using as my demand source? How do I want to treat cycle stock? Where is my failure rate coming from? Do I want to calculate a, a last time buy scenario for spares, um, et cetera? So let's now go to the results. Um, so what I have at, at, at the top of the page are my two summary charts. And what they're doing is, is giving me an aggregate view of of this detail chart at the bottom. So in the detail chart, I see, you know, for every SKU at every resource, the results of the uh, of the calculations. So I'm seeing my, you know, here's the safety stock, cycle stock. If there is any in transit, there's, there's not for this particular product. If it's a spare part, how many spare parts I need to carry, uh, what my max and average inventory position uh would be that i would likely expect to be at and and then if i'm bringing in actual inventory how much of that can i uh apportion to safety stock how much to to cycle stock and and do i have you know any excess left or do i not have not have enough um and and the way the color coding works here so so red is where i've got too little um, the, the amber is where I have a service risk, so between 50% and 100% of my safety stock. Green means I'm somewhere within target, so somewhere between safety stock and safety stock plus uh, top of my cycle stock. And, and yellow is uh, where, I've got, uh, where I've got excess. Um, and, and then um, I, I get a, a, an assessment of what the achievable service level is given my current on hand uh, on hand position so a nice a nice visual 
uh, you know, where have I got too much, where have I got too little? And, and that's then translated uh, at the aggregate level by resource. So if we look at uh, this DC in, in Billings, um, I can see here's what the model tells me I need in total safety stock at that resource, uh, total cycle stock, and here's how my actual inventory stacks up against that. So how much can I apportion to safety stock, how much to cycle stock, and how much is excess? And, and then a, a different lens on, on that to give me insight into the quality of the, the mix of my products. So I can see here that, you know, there's, there's an amount that's too much. What I'm seeing in this chart is percentage of products. So I can see that 14% I've got too little, 21% are within target, and, and actually 64% of my SKUs, I've got too much inventory. So I get, you know, rather than just looking at comparing totals where I might, you know, I might be inclined to say, yeah, that, that location, I've got there or thereabouts the right amount actually from a mix point of view uh, i'm not in a very good not in a very good place and and another kind of another view on that uh that inventory health uh is this rebalancing view so what i'm seeing here is for each product and for each resource so for each stocking point uh where do i have too much and how how what what amount have i got where I got too little. Uh, if it's a blank, it means I'm I'm kind of within uh, within target. Um, and and then the the interesting column I think is this this one at the end, which is is the total net requirement within the network. So so what we're saying here is if we take spare two uh, in total in the network, I've got too many. Um, actually, three of my locations I haven't got enough. So all I need to do is is kind of rebalance within the network. Whereas if we look at spare one or spare three, that's saying actually in total in the network, I don't have enough stock, so I need to add stock in. Um, and, and, and I also need to do some uh, rebalancing as well, but rebalancing on its own is not gonna address the problem. And then the final thing we can do is, is compare scenarios. So I've, I've saved some already, so I'm not gonna save this. Um, so let me let me load uh, these in. So what I have here is three scenarios I've saved. These first two I've created with one network design and, and played around with the service level. Um, and, and this third one, I've used a different network design. So a network design where the same products, but I've optimized the footprint for the network, reduced the number of DCs, and I want to compare that side by side. Um, so again, we get a lot of the same detail in these detail tables, but it's uh, it's this top uh, chart that's the interesting one. So here I can see there's my total actual inventory in the network right now. Here's my two scenarios using that base case network design I brought in, just with different service levels, so I can see uh, the increased safety stock requirement because my new service levels, I increased some of them versus uh, the, the current standard service levels I'm using. And, and then here's my uh, results based on the optimized network design I brought in. Um, so I, to do that, I simply you know, would, would, would click on uh, network output here and, and choose, a, choose a different uh, network output file to bring in, um, create a scenario. And, and what I'm seeing is, you know, here's the significant reduction in safety stock I get compared to the base case and, and also a reduction in cycle stock. So I can see the inventory impact now of my two different network designs and the choices that I might make service level wise uh, within that existing network. I can see them compared uh, side by side. So that's the, the quick tour of inventory planning.